So what is Java? We hear the, the Java programming language quite frequently, but a lot of people don't understand exactly what Java is. Java is actually an object-oriented general purpose programming language. It actually has no relationship whatsoever to JavaScript. That's a very common misconception that Java and JavaScript are similar languages. They are uh, fundamentally different. They do share the name Java and they do share uh, some syntax elements with uh, not only uh, JavaScript, C, C++, they all have similar syntax, which helps developers move from one language to another. Now, Java itself was founded by James Grossing in 1995. Uh, he was working at Sun Microsystems at the time, and Java became wildly popular. However, back in uh, 2010, uh, Oracle acquired Sun Microsystems, so now Oracle is the owner of the Java programming languages. Now, initially, those early versions of Java were actually uh, quite slow, but the performance of Java as a programming language has caught up to, uh, really comes pretty close to native languages now, so Java is very performant. Now, some of these early performance problems with Java were related to the fact that Java is a platform-independent language, meaning that once we compile Java, we can take it to any platform and run it. So if I compile Java on Windows, of course, it's going to run on Windows, but I can take that compiled code and move it on over to a Mac OS system, run it there, and, or I can move it over to Linux, run it there. So Java has support for most major operating systems out there. And once it is compiled down to what is called bytecode, we can take that bytecode and run it on any of the supported platforms. So this is kind of a first for a programming language uh, to have such wide support across so many platforms. And this really it does help with the popularity of the Java programming language because it can run under Windows. It can run under Android, obviously. That is the language of Android. Uh, it can run under Linux, which Android actually uses a flavor of Linux. Uh, Mac OS as well can support Java. Uh, IBM mainframe, so they support Java. So it can be supported in all these different environments. And this environment, what's happening underneath the covers there is that bytecode is being interpreted by what is called a JVM. A JVM is called a Java Virtual Machine. Now this virtual machine takes that bytecode and basically think of it as like an adapter. So it's going to take that bytecode and provide an adapter for that specific operating system. So the bytecode remains the same, but the adapter changes for each operating system out there. So it gives us a lot of flexibility as Java developers because we can write that code once and deploy it to any supported operating system through that JVM. Now, you've probably heard of the term JVM. Uh, there's also the term JRE and then also JDK. So these are three very distinct terms. JVM is going to be the Java virtual machine. JRE is going to be the Java runtime environment. And then JDK is... Java Development Kit. These are all different things. So the JVM, it's actually included in the JRE. The JRE does not include any tools to compile Java to bytecode. That is what the JDK is for. So the Java Development Kit allows you to compile Java to bytecode. The JRE is the runtime environment. That is what provides the JVM for the specific operating system. So when we, we are uh, deploying Java code, we need to have a JRE installed on the target operating system where the Java code is going to be running. When we are writing Java code, we need to have the JDK installed so that we can not only run Java bytecode, but we can also compile down to Java bytecode. Now, as we start developing with Java, we need to start paying attention to the specific re release of Java. Right now, uh, Java 11 is what is called a LTS release, a long-term support release. What uh, Oracle has done in overseeing the release process of Java is companies like to have a very stable release process. So they are going to be working with Java 11 for some time, and this is a long-term support. And they're saying, Oracle saying, we are going to have this uh, release of Java out there and we are going to support it for a very long time. Uh, I think it's six years, or six or eight years, if I remember correctly. So this, this uh, is providing company support for the Java environment. 
and this includes things like bug pass patches and technical support from Oracle needed for that version of Java. Now, Oracle's also changed the release cadence. Every six months, they are going to create a release of Java. So uh, Java 11 is the LTS release right now. Java 12 has come out, and recently Java 13 came out. And these incremental releases are uh, replacements. So if you are on Java 12, you are expected to update to Java 13. And where there are non-breaking changes, those features are brought back into Java 11 as much as possible. So these are all things for long-term support. But for the people running Java 11, they do have uh, uninterrupted support. If you're doing these incremental releases, you're expected to upgrade to the next ones. For the purposes of learning Java, I would stay on an LTS release, and this is what companies are going to be utilizing. The Every six months, the cadence releases. These are for new features. Uh, you might want to kick the tires on them and check them out. Uh, but for anything that you are going to be coding for production, definitely uh, go with the LTS release because that is the, the way that you want to be going. Now, Java itself does have a number of different vendors. So the Java API is uh, open source. Anybody can develop against it. There is a formal process for you to develop your own JRE to uh, run on a, a platform. Oracle does certify these companies. There is a certification process. There's a whole testing process. It's uh, fairly complicated. But with that said, uh, Oracle does provide uh, Java. And then there's a open JDK, which Oracle heavily co uh, contributes to. But then other vendors like Amazon, Red Hat, IBM, they do have their own implementations of Java. Google for Android has their own implementation of Java. So these are different alternative Java applications. Uh, for the purposes of this course, I would say go ahead and use the Oracle or OpenJDK uh, flavors of Java just to be con for consistency. There is no cost for that. There's, people are getting concerned that the Oracle version of Java now requires Oracle support. So the Oracle version of Java does require support for production environments of Oracle clients. So the caveat is for you as a developer, you do not need to pay for Oracle. And the other alternative such as OpenJDK, that is an alternative open source, uh, no cost, no frills uh, type of Java that you can utilize. So people got really concerned saying, oh, Oracle's charging for Java. Oracle's actually charging support for Java and requiring people to that have Oracle products that are using the Oracle Java in their production environments, Oracle wants to be charging them support, which is going to give uh, companies like think that you're like a, a large bank or something. You want to have that technical support. So if something do, does go wrong, if there is a bad uh, bug that is found, a security flaw that is found, you want to have that support so that you are protected and you can get your issues rectified quickly. That's it. That is why Oracle is charging support for production environments. But for open source developers, uh, developers in general, developing on their own laptops, you do not need to pay support for Oracle uh, for Java. And you do have the alternative to use any of the other vendors available for Oracle or for Java. You can uh, open JDK as a great, great option to, to utilize over Oracle. So you do have these alternatives. And if you are running like a startup, you can use OpenJDK for your production environments rather than paying Oracle for support for Java. So there are a number of options, still a very robust and thriving open source community around Java.